This message comes out of God uh, working in me in the last months that this next year of our life is going to be the greatest year of our life. You are going to have blessings in your marriage and your finances. You're going to have houses. You're, you're, things are going to happen. Things you've waited for are going to manifest themselves. And what the Lord began to show me and speak to me was what, when you're in a right relationship, husband and wife, roommates, boss, employee, when you're in fellowship with one another, when you're living so that you're not fighting or bickering or not happy because the roommate left the pans in the sink or whatever, that there's, there's, a, there's a different level of blessing that can take place. And with this blessing that God wants to bring to you, God showed me that this next year, 2022, is a year of purity. And so what I've done is I have... Um, I have, <laughs> yeah. anyway, let me just uh, take a few moments and run through these real quick. I have five areas of purity, and uh, you're, you're going to get a paper later that defines purity for you. And we all have our own thoughts of purity, but I want you to think of a silver or gold or something valuable or precious to you. When, what they do is they first purify the metal, and God wants you pure. We should live a pure life, but, but I, I'm going to show you, number one, you need to have purity of purpose. And that comes from the scripture that I, my reference is Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 2, which is my favorite scripture in the Bible. But if, if we're going to have purity, we want to have purity of purpose. What's my purpose? Is my purpose for the kingdom of God, or is my purpose so I can have one more biscuit, one more thing for me? So Proverbs 16, 2, let me read it to you. All a person's ways seem right and pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. That's from the NIV version, see? And uh, King James says, the ways of a man seem right in his own eyes, but God judges the heart or the motive or the intent. So God knows your intent, just like a mother knows the intent or the purpose or what their, where their child's at, true or false. True. Come on, a kid walks in and mama goes, oh, what's up? Yeah, right, yeah. What have you been up to? Nothing, mama. Well, mama knows the lion. See, God knows if you're doing this for him or yourself. And so the very first thing you want to have is purity of purpose. The second thing that you want to have is purity of mind, okay? The thoughts that, so first is your purpose. The second thing is your mind. Can I tell you something? Ever have wrong thoughts come to you that you knew you shouldn't have? Yes. Yes. Do you know, you ever have anxiety? Yes. Anxiety comes to you because you're not designed for wrong thoughts. And when you have impure or improper thoughts, you, 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 yourself, your person gets into anxiety. Come on, I'm, I'm not picking on you now, but right? I want you to see that if you're experiencing anxiety, it's because you are anxious. The Bible says be anxious for nothing, but you're anxious because your mind is percolating things. It's cooking up a brew that you shouldn't do. So the scripture here then is Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So the number one thing we want to do is purpose. We want to have right purpose, but the number two it once, now that you desire right purpose, you have to have right thoughts. Right. Yeah. It, it's, um, you know, you think about things before you do it. Yeah. Right? You had to think about church before coming. You had other things you could have done, other places you should have gone, could have gone, would have gone. But you, you thought, and the more you thought about going to church, you said, I'm going. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go to church. The next thing you know, where'd you end up? 
church. If you think on something, the more you think on it. So God says, think on these things that are true and just and pure. And if you think on those right things, you will end up doing right things. If I start talking in a sermon about pizza, after that service, there's a rush for people to get on their apps and their phones to order their pizza because pizza was put on their mind. I can say it today because they're all closed. <laughs> Are you hearing? So the first thing you want to do is you want to have a purity of purpose. The second thing you want to do is you want to have a purity of thought. Keep your thoughts right. Come on, right? Yeah. Think of the last thing you did wrong. Hopefully it was years ago. The last thing you did wrong, you thought on it before you did it. You didn't just wake up in the morning and do it wrong. You had to think on that thing. And listen, even though, come on, we love God. Yeah. Come on, we're most right? Yeah. We're, we're believers. We're, we're into the virgin birth. We're into the, the birth of a Christ child. He went to Calvary, died on the cross, right? Bore our sins. We believe on that. And we have to think on our sin before we can sin. Yeah. We can't just go out and sin. We're not sinners anymore. We're born again. We love God. So you think on it. So if you want to have a pure life, which will keep you in relationship with God this year, you want to keep your thought life right. And when a thought comes, always remember with thoughts, you can only think on one thing at a time. You can only think on one. And there's no human that can think on two things at a time. You think on one thing at a time. So if the wrong thought is there, you have to displace it with the right thought in a quick, easy way. I'm, come on, I'm teaching you a quick, quick solution here, ready? Is that you can speak out what it says. So it says, uh, you, you know, you've given up drinking alcoholic beverages, and you take the thought, I'm going to go out and have a drink of alcohol. So what do you do? You speak out of your mouth, I no longer drink alcohol. I don't need it to satisfy myself. You follow what I'm saying? So you, you begin to say out of your mouth, and you say, I'll never forgive that person. You, you don't think that. You say, judge not, and you will not be judged. You see, you have to think, and I can't think on the, what the Word says and what I want to do that's wrong. Everybody hear me? Yeah. And that purity will keep you lined up with God and His Word, which then keeps you lined up for the blessing. Yeah. Just go home tonight and tell your spouse, have a really merry day tonight and tomorrow, and tell them, I don't love you anymore. I have a boyfriend or I have a girlfriend. See how it goes. <laughs> Now, now I, I hope that's not true, but my point to you is this, is that saying that and even saying that thought, yeah. even though it's not true, is going to cause great stress in people's lives. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, we want to have purity of action. And that's your hands. See, I don't want to get into it. You ever notice much of the things we did wrong, our hands were involved? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Did you ever hit somebody you shouldn't hit? I'm, I'm not advocating. You use your hand. You ever pick up a drink you shouldn't have drank? You used your hand. So, we have here Psalm 24.4. Only those whose hands and hearts are pure. Who? Only those whose hands and whose hearts are pure, who do not wash, excuse me, thank you, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. So you need pure hands and a pure heart. And when your heart's pure, come on, when your heart's pure, your hands will do the right thing. Yeah. So you have right purpose, which then you follow up with right thoughts, which then follows up with your hands doing the right thing. So you're, the same hand that can slap someone can comfort someone. The same hand that can knock someone down can lift someone up. So you want to make sure you have pure hands and a pure heart. And when you have a pure heart, you're having pure thoughts, you have pure purpose, and you're walking with a pure God. 
This will help you. And, and I, have, I have a gift for all of you so you can, and, and, and I have a notes for all of you so you all have a copy of the notes. Ready? Yeah. All right, now we have purity of vision. See, what you see is what you do. Yes. So when you have purity of vision, so there's a scripture, it's called Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. What's the verse? What is it? What did I say? Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. <laughs> All right, let me. I'll go it alone. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. There you go. You, you ever look at somebody and see something you don't like? Impure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, shall they shall see. So when you look at me now, what do you see? <laughs> Don't get carried away. See, I'm, I'm working on it a little bit, but what am I telling you? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What do you see when you look at your fellow man? See, Romans 2, 1, what you judge another man for, you're what? Guilty of yourself. But blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? See God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for what are you going to see? You're going to see, depend, if you're impure, then you'll see the wrong thing when you look at people. When I got uh, uh, born again a number of years ago, I came home from church. My wife and I had younger kids, and we had multiple services, so we're going to different services. And I came home, and I said, Cindy, the minister at church, he has changed. I'm telling you, he was so ugly and mean before. He was always crabbing. I'm telling you, he's just the sweetest guy in the world. She said, Bill, he hasn't changed. You changed. Blessed. Are the pure in heart, when you, what do you see when you see your spouse? Don't answer right now. What do you see when you see your spouse? Because blessed are, the, if you're pure in heart, then you see the gift. I have a dear friend, I've known him for 30 some years. My wife and I, they're, they're just very special to us. But I've, I've told this story many times. You know what the greatest part that, that they played in my life? That 30 some years ago, when I didn't have anywhere near the maturity, the development, the grace, the whatever you want to call it that I have today, they were able to see the gift because blessed are the pure in heart and they could see my gift. So when other people were rejecting the gift, they were praying for, encouraging, encouraging, nurturing, helping develop, being a part of it. Why? Because blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, right? So you have clean purpose, you have clean, pure thoughts, you have clean, pure hands, and then your hands are not giving any signs to other drivers. Amen. Love you. Come on. All right. Then we have purity of resources. That's your finances. Listen, you know what the thing about money is? Money, there's no problem with money. There's no problem with money. There's a problem when people get money or a greatness in people when they get money because whatever you are comes out when money comes to you. Right? One person's buying a Bible when they get money. Another person's buying pornography when they get money. Same money, picking up manuscripts, booklets, literature, one being changed forever for the glory of God, one being perverted until the glory of God comes into their life. Right? Again, one man can buy a gun with money and go hunting or be a policeman and defend his family, or, you know, defend the, the neighborhood and the family and the community. And another guy can buy a gun with the same money, the same amount, and kill somebody or kill a family or go to a mall and shoot it up. So you see, money's not the problem. It's just when you receive resources, 
you find out who you are. If you want to know who you are, find out what you do with your money. Show me your checkbook, show me your credit card balance, and I can show you. So let me go. Purity of resources, and that's in James chapter 1 and verse 27. The spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make a difference in the lives of the orphans and widows in their trouble and to refuse... To be corrupted by the world's values. Because again, in, in, uh, I was talking to this um, individual, they, they run a major sports league. Now, I'm not talking professional, you know, with the you know, youth league. And so different parents will come in and say, listen, uh, we don't have the money for our kids. You know, we've got two kids and we, we have enough for maybe one or a half of one. You know, tough times. But we'd have to, and there they are in these designer jeans with these nails with six different color with jewels embedded on them. No, no, are you hearing what I'm saying? See, it, it's, we, we chase after the worldly value. We want our kid to play soccer, but we want the other team's families to pay for it. Or baseball or football. Or what, am I making sense to you? See, you need to use, where do your resources go? Where do your talents go? Now listen, you've got to use your talent for your job. I get it. But what are you doing with all those talents that you have? And we all have talents. What are you doing with those talents that are helping other people? Your resources. So are you chasing the world's values and getting yourself another pair of $600 tennis shoes that do not make you jump any higher? <laughs> they don't make you run any faster. Well, they may make you run faster if somebody's trying to steal them from you. <laughs> what are you doing with your resources? See, do you have purity of resources? When you get your money, do you think of God first, or do you think of God fit in, or no room for God at all? Do you think of the widow? Do you think of the orphan? My wife and I, have, we, we've made it a practice, and I can't say that we've done it with everyone, but we've done it with many over the years. Every time a man, a husband dies... We send that widow a card, and we put a check in it. I'm not saying they're broke. I'm not saying they don't have any money. I'm saying that if my wife's husband died, I would pray that everybody would send her a check. I don't care how many millions or billions or trillions. It's just nice to have somebody say, I love you. I'm thinking about you and enclosed as a check for whatever amount because it's, it's a lot easier to send a card than it is a card with a check. And I'm not talking about the amount, but it makes a statement to that widow. It makes a statement to that whatever you're sending to or talking to that my resources are here. Right? Or, come on, you've received. Isn't it nice? I think of TV and Christian television and, you know, 30,000 viewers watching on Facebook. Wouldn't it be nice if every one of them sent a dollar? It's not so we get $30,000. But you know that all 30,000 of them are not only watching, but they're doing something. Yeah. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. So you want to have purpose of your resources, your time, your talent, your money, your ability. And if you'll do that, and if you'll keep it pure and say, God... Here's my time, my talent, my money, my abilities. What would you have me do that I'm always open as a plumber to fix my neighbor's toilet? I'm always open as a, as a dance teacher to have a student in that the good Lord tells me to take care of. Not every, you know, what, you, you understand what I'm saying? That you're, you're a butcher and so you know the prime cuts and you just every once in a while pick up your neighbor down the street who doesn't have a whole family in the traditional sense of a mom and a dad, one of the mom or the dad's missing, and you bring them home a couple of steaks. Why? Because you know how to pick out the best. Right. And, you would, and, and you get them and you pack it up, wrap it up, and take it home to them. See, you're, you're, you all have time, talent, resources. Some of you know how to shop. I don't know how to shop, so I need somebody to shop for me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you'll use your time, your talents, and you'll keep them pure, and you'll keep them and say, Lord, you gave them to me, now I'm going to use them 
for your benefit. Okay, here's everybody's favorite. You ready? I saved this one. You ready? Purity of speech. Purity of speech, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. I save this for the last one. Don't let anyone, see, folks, you ever have a smart mouth? We all have at least once in our life, right? Even the quietest of us, we might not have said it to anybody else, we said it to somebody. We said it in the shower. Boy, I tell you that little Johnny at school, I get back to school, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. And then you see Johnny at school. <laughs> But when you have purity of speech, see, then there's another scripture. I didn't use it here. When you have purity of speech, you're not going to be saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Jesus said these things. He says, I only do what I see my Father in heaven do. And I only say what I hear my Father in heaven say. So you see, we're supposed to be little Christ. Christians. Christ-like ones. So you and I are supposed to be doing Good actions and good words. How many things would you have said today if you only said what you heard God say? I think there's some folks that would have thought some of us were mutes. 1 Timothy 4.12 Don't let anyone look down on your youth because you are young. Or, or, because you are young. Listen, folks, don't let anybody look down on your color. Your gender, your wages, your job. Don't let anybody look down on anything. And again, I can't stop you from how you look at me, but I don't care how you look at me. How do I look at myself? I was listening to this clip by a preacher, and, and I, I got to tell it real quick and real short, but the preacher said, he, he's going to, he says, you know, I got to go get some counsel and get a little help. So he's going to see this guy, and he's discipling him, and he says, I got to cut right to the chase. He says, what, ne never mind what anybody thinks of you. Go by what God says about you and then live according to that. So if somebody thinks I'm bad or a bum or poor or the wrong gender or the wrong color or the wrong size or the wrong age or the wrong anything, it makes no difference to me. Know who I am and be who I am and be with it pure and live it for God, and it will be right. So don't let anybody look down on you for whatever they're looking down on you for. Yeah. Right. Now, if you're doing something wrong, fix it. But if they're looking down on you because of whatever that statement is, smile and keep going. Yeah. Amen. But set an example for the believers in speech. Remember, Jesus only said what he heard his father and him say. In conduct, Jesus only did what he saw his Father in heaven do. In love, we're all supposed to walk in love. The guy says, oh, I love you. I just don't want to be around you. I love you. I'm just never going to talk to you. I love you. I'm just never going to forgive you. I love you, but I don't have to talk nice to you because you didn't talk nice to somebody else. See, you may be heard right and you may be heard wrong, but you probably heard wrong because you're not in love. You've got to be in love to hear right. In love, in faith, and in purity. Don't anybody look down on you. And if you'll stop allowing people to look down on you. If you'll stop people from looking down on you, you won't have the negative vision. You won't have the negative thoughts. You won't have the negative hands. You're going to be, you won't have negative purpose. I always remember, and I had to say, and I, I received this word from God that was from a man of God, from God to me, and somebody will say something about me that's not edifying. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter how well I know them. You know what I do? I run off, and I go on my phone, and I play that word. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have to stick with the thoughts of God because man could be wrong. God cannot be wrong. And God says you're precious. God says you're valuable. God says he loves you. God says you're kind. 
God says you're good. God says you're precious. Who's hurting me? Can you, can you see it? Don't let anybody look down on you. And you know, and I know that you've looked down and you've been looked down upon. If you have to, make your own affirmation. I still like to talk to myself in the mirror better than anybody else. I say, Bill, you are one good looking guy. You are so kind, so compassionate, so caring, so generous, so wonderful. Oh, Bill, everybody should get to know you. I see that you're not all overwhelmingly in agreement, but that's okay. <laughs> see, because I can't live off of your opinion, you might be wrong. And if I was wrong and didn't fulfill every one of those things, I'm going to keep saying that to myself until I not only believe it, but I live it. Amen. And if it takes me the rest of my life, I'm going to keep looking in that mirror and say, come on, Bill. You're kind to everyone. Come on, Bill. You're a generous man. Come on, Bill. You love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, thy whole soul, thy whole mind, and all thy strength. Come on, Bill. You and the Father are one. And there might be somebody else that sees different. But God said, I and he are one. God said, Beloved, above all things, I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God, I look in the mirror and say, Bill, your soul is prospering. So if somebody else says something about my mind, or my will, my emotions, I will not let them look. I cannot stop them from looking down on them, but I can stop myself from getting down to where they're talking about me. You can't stop anybody from calling you any name. You can't stop anybody from telling you what you're not. But you can stop everybody from being right in your life when it doesn't say you're the best of the best. If they're not saying what God's saying about you, maybe you can't run away. Maybe it's your child. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's your spouse. But you can say, when you walk, when you walk away from that, you say, no, God. You love me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a man under authority. See, you have to say something of God. You, but if, what, if you listen to that thought, come on, help me out here. We had someone testify here a week ago, and they were saying how when they were young, someone they loved very much said things to them, and they said a thing to them, and they said it over and over multiple times. And that thing dogged them for 20-some years until God revealed it to them. What was said, they forgave the hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, don't hold the hurt. Can you see where your purity of purpose will take your life down a narrower, more pleasant way? Because you'll be with God.